All right, I think we're live. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is Jeremy at Pro Sound Effects, licensing director over here, uh, joined by uh, a couple of esteemed Pro Sound Effects uh, clients, Paul Salveson at uh, Dave Ramsey, and we got Scott Sorensen from Headspace. Uh, kick it over to them just for a quick intro. Paul, you want to uh, jump in first? Uh, hi, yeah. Um, I'm director of audio here at Ramsey, and we run the the Ramsey show during the day live uh, with 6 million uh, viewers live every day. And then we have a bunch of YouTube shows that we run uh, and we, we do a lot of post-production on those and, and use pro sound effects. Yeah. Awesome, um, Scott. I'm Scott uh, Sorensen. I'm also the director of audio, but for Headspace, we're a mindfulness and meditation app. We also do sleep content and uh, we're also kind of adapting into the telehealth uh, world. We do everything, music, post, uh, you know, obviously meditation recording. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, so yeah, I should say we're here today to, uh, speak on the topic of managing a creative team, um, which I think is, you know, something that kind of brings its own unique challenges, uh, in, in the world of, of teamwork and in production. So, um, yeah, let's, let's kick it off. I mean, kind of broad question, but, you know what, uh, and, and Paul, you can you can go first again. What what are the challenges of of managing a creative team in twenty twenty four? Well, I, I'd say the the toughest challenge is when you're working with a creative team, you just can't tell them what to do because you want them to be creative. So um, when you're trying to, um, for instance, we, we re recently expanded our our uh, contract with Pro Sound Effects using sound crew and so or sound cue and we're trying to get all the video editors uh we have almost a dozen video editors and we're trying to get them to buy into using that so that we can share that across between the audio engineers and the video engineers so i can't just say hey you're going to use this i i kind of have to be a salesman and say hey this is a great idea to be more creative um we can share ideas back and forth and everything so you you're really kind of being a salesman to your own team um, and twisting your arm a little bit without just telling them what to do is basically it. Yeah. And I imagine at a certain point, there may be the circumstances where it's like, well, you know, I, this is a decision that I'm making as the, as the right. leader here, right. but ideally you want enrollment from, from people and, right. you know, with their busy schedules and all their deadlines, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to take out time to, to uh, you know, to, learn new skills and, a, you know, incorporate a new tool. Yes. Yeah. So we, we hear that a lot for sure. Yeah. Scott, Scott, what do you think over there? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot, I, I do agree with you on that too, Paul. Um, it's difficult to get video people to, to, uh, kind of adhere to standards and audio just generally. Uh, but you know, we, we do what we can. Uh, but I also think too, you know, there's a lot of options out there for, for people to kind of get lost in. And it's important for for people like myself and Paul to kind of drive initiatives and focus on certain things that we think will you know best suit the needs. Yeah, absolutely. Have you had any experiences like that with tools other than sound libraries? I'm just uh, you know something that you're trying to get buy in across, even with the audio teams, not between audio and video. Yeah, not to bash Reaper, but uh, <laughs> talking. Reaper talking to Pro Tools is very problematic. So stuff like that, we, we've used some people in, in that capacity before, and it was really difficult to kind of port over, you know, a 25 minute podcast that we were working on with like a hundred tracks, you know, so things like that, it's really, it's easy. Standardization is like key to workflow and, and, and process and getting things done on time. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. Like I'm curious uh, because I've heard a lot of different, leaders kind of take different approaches to this to what degree um do you guys like to sort of say hey these are the tools that every you know and maybe there are some where you give flexibility hey you know use whatever you want for this but everybody's got to do this like what are some examples there and like where how do you draw the line like what wh when it's something where it's like eh, this has to be standard across all all team members versus you know choose your own adventure um well uh far as output, like we're, we're battling, you're always battling the, whatever the set output is for YouTube or Apple or whatever. And, and we got to get, all, we got to get the buy-in with video and audio. This is what we're aiming for. Uh, and we, we're going to do these things to do it. And then it, we just, I won't say any names, but we just 
we just replace one of our main uh, mastering plugins for, per se for a couple of reasons for processing power. Our exports were taking longer than they should be. And then we also, it, it was also, we moved to a better tool that had the loudness metering within the tool instead of having a separate loudness meter. So we could standardize this across. Um, we, ha we have 15 Pro Tools rigs that we got to keep. Um, th that's the tough part is keeping them all the same. You know, you're, they're, right. the computers are different. The, the operating system is different. We, but we got to keep uh, pretty much all the rigs the same so that if someone gets sick, someone's out on vacation or whatever, and that particular show has to be done by another engineer or editor, like they can move that template over and... Right. Um, pull it up and work, work in that template. So you kind of have, that's why you really, is why we standardize things here is like, we've got, to, it's got to move across the team instead of you got, when you're sitting in your own studio, like when I sit in my own studio, I could use whatever gear I wanted and I could delete it right. and try another one. And, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but now that you're a business, like I also have to go through procurement, like um, the software has to be, the it has to be american it has to uh, all the licensing has to be uh you know there's all these criteria that like once you're a business you gotta think about all these things that you don't think about when you're your own engineer you know yeah yeah and i feel like a lot of um is, is, you know teams when they first start out even if they're at you know a, a business or a big big corporation maybe it's like all right we're going to dip our toes into doing sound in-house or doing production in-house and they hire somebody and they're just like, yeah, just, you know, use what you have. And that's like, that's like a, a virus that can kind of grow at, over yeah. time. And yeah. we've seen so many times people coming to us that are just like, yo, we've been doing this for like five, six, seven years. And like, it's not sustainable anymore because we built it up. Like, you know, Paul came in with his, with his rig that he had at home and, you know, that doesn't scale anymore. And now we're, you know, tightening up our, our britches in terms of licensing and standardization. So they come to us. So that's, that's, that's really funny. You say that I, I've heard that a lot. And Scott, any, any thoughts here? Yeah. I mean, I, I, everything that Paul's saying, it's just all the same kind of things that I've had to deal with, right? Like if someone on the team is sick, how, how do I ensure that the work gets done and make sure that we have the same you know, plugins. Um, and some plugins are a lot easier to put on a system than others. And some require iLock and some don't, you know, so yeah. how do you make sure that you you're doing this the right way? I feel like minimizing things helps a lot, you know, and using like some of the bigger companies can help with that. Um, but it's also like out of your control when it comes to certain other elements like video, for instance, right? So you got to make sure that, hey, if I don't care what you do, as long as I get it like this, when, when you give it to me, if you're using some kind of automation in, in uh, Premiere, I need you to bake that automation that you want. And so then you send it to me and then also send me the non-automated version so I can fix it. Um, that's a, you know, that's yeah. an audio person thing, but, <laughs> right. but, uh, but, uh, you know, it's, th those are the challenges, but I think that once people like join the team or they're on the team and I say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is in the best interest of us. Also, I keep it open. Do you think this is the best option? Yeah. I want to do this. Like, when do I, when do I update my Mac to Sonoma? I'm very scared to do that For right sure. now. Right. Always. But I had yeah. one of my people quite yet literally yesterday do that let's right. see what happens do all yeah. my plugins still work you yeah. know and then yeah. as far as like managing up to people who can kind of control the purse strings i go look you know how your itunes stopped working on monterey that's what happens to us but i'm like in a right. weird like i'm constantly having to change my operating system and update things i need to have admin control of my system it doesn't love that but you know you gotta you gotta like explain these things and work through them over time yeah yeah, yeah it's really Kudos. interesting you got your own admin in control <laughs> i don't <laughs> uh, scott you mentioned something min minimizing uh which which kind of struck me um can you explain that a little more does that mean uh like consolidation of of resources of, among vendors so kind of like paul with this mastering plugin he was able to take two plugins folded into one plugin now mm -hmm. um, and plugin could be a wrapper for anything. 
two resources yeah. into one and it does better than the previous two did. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. If I have a template, right, and I open that template, I want to make sure that everyone on my team has the same template, has the same, you know, saves for, you know, for certain EQ chains or, and whatnot. I mean, we're not doing like crazy, you know, orchestral recording and mixing. You know, we're doing like, you know, you can see behind me, it's nerd synth stuff <laughs> and mainly v voiceover right so yeah. um and then sound design elements but i think that if it's like i have a real simple chain for for things then we have it like my main composer and i you know my partner and i we work on the same systems utilizing dropbox right so if i'm working in ableton for instance and i we have another thing it's called you know commit commit to everything i don't mm. want to see any midi in the session like if right, it's right. if it doesn't work get rid of it and start over is how i look at it yeah, yeah that's great yeah cool um yeah kind of switching back to something that kind of came up early on um in terms of the the challenges of managing a team so how how do you how do you fo foster creativity um and you know innovation and um and and sort of pursuing all the things that a creative person wants to pursue while still meeting deadlines. Scott, <laughs> you want to do that one? Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, so I, it's a couple things. First of all, I never answer anybody's questions. Like, like I just won't. Yeah. So if I have somebody on my team that says, Hey, I don't know how to do this or what should I do here? I say, well, let's, why don't you answer your own question first, follow your instinct. And if that, you know, is wrong, I'll show you what we could have done differently. Right. A lot of these things in creativity are, are, um, they're not like truth. Right. Right. They're, they're, they're of the time and of the person that makes the thing. So let's try it. I might be wrong. You might be right. I might not have done that. And I think that that opens the world up. Um, to a lot of things. In addition to that, um, you know, that that's sort of like uh, the other part of that is like, I do this, I have an 80, 20 rule. So 80% of the time you need to do the work and 20% of the time you need to be finding like a pursuit, a thing to get better at. And it's mm. my job as a leader to make that runway for you. Right. So for me, it's all about empowering people to do great work, to think outside of the box and not to feel like, if they have an answer to something that I might not be into that they're able to voice that. Yeah. That's really interesting. I love, I, I mean, I, I'm very uh, attracted to the idea of just not answering anybody's questions, whether it has to do with creativity or not. Just like, don't ask me. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, but that, that's really, that's really great, Scott. Yeah. Paul, any thoughts? Well, uh, what Scott said, maybe think of, um, we kind of instinctively, hire people that are curious, curious about their creativity so that they have something within them that's driving them. And I'm basic, basically cultivating that, even though we're, you know, we're delivering uh, this show has three episodes this week, this show has, you know, two episodes, but we're, we're, we're uh, just kind of, we, at times you can feel like you're just pounding them out. Um, right. But the curiosity in each engineer of like, oh, what what would happen if we did this or whatever, you kind of encouraging to do that. Um, plus, uh, we all work here together, like we we actually on site working together. So the team being together is is really a cool situation. Which I most of my in, in career as an engineer, I was by myself, um, except you know early on, eighties and nineties, you used to go to a studio and track stuff. But then around 2000, things started to change. People had their own studios and you're you're isolated. I'm sitting in a mix room in the United States. My producer's in uh, London. Uh, the artist is somewhere on an Asian tour and, and you're kind of by yourself. So being here at Ramsey now, I've got 10 engineers and they all can get my jokes. And then we, you know, <laughs> we can go, yeah, are you going to use that sound effect? Come on, I got a better sound. You know, there, there's a, there's a yeah. it's cool being with a team where you kind of like, 
not trying to outdo each other, but encourage each other like, okay, this could be really cool. This is something you could do. And, and that's a lot of fun being around with other other engineers that that helps that creativity, even though you're like pounding it out every week. This has got to get done. This has got to get done. Yeah, that's really cool. I'll give a quick share of on my end of just like a personal anecdote is when I, when I was in grad school, I was at NYU for, for music tech, uh, shouts to NYU's, NYU music tech program. Um, but uh, my advisor at the time, I was trying to go into studio recording and, you know, she got, we, she got to know me pretty well. And she said to me one day, she's like, do you really want to just be sitting in a room by yourself? Like you, you have a personality, like you got to find a way to use it. And that actually like moved me away from, you know, being a, a mix engineer, or, you know, something like that. Not that I was, you know. I was never any good at that anyways, but, uh, yeah, just a, a cool thing. You know, I think it's, uh, I'm always in awe and really like admire the the work that our, our teams do that, you know, we work with pro sound effects because it is such a unique thing where you have individuals who are working on a show, right. They're working on projects themselves, but there necessarily is an element of teamwork that is that that's part of it. And, you know, Paul, like you said, sometimes that's, you're all, sitting around joking or joking and, you know, pretending to laugh at Paul's jokes because he's the boss and you, you have right. to laugh. <laughs> and then they'll get a game going. Uh, who can sneak, sneak in the Wilhelm scream <laughs> or a, fa a fart sound underneath oh, something. I, I mean, they're that. always, I got to start following Dave Ramsey a little closer. This is this sneaking is, these uh, uh, sounds in and see uh, who can get more in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Cool. Yeah. Switching gears here. Um, I guess it's still on the topic of creative creativity. Like what are the most common, like creative arguments that, that may arise between team members or between you and a team member? Um, and like, how would, how do you address them? I think it's kind of in the same vein you want to foster, but also, you know, usher them towards the solution you need. Right. Ooh. I actually had, uh, two, two guys, it wasn't that big of a deal, but that they, they work on it. We had a show called George Camel show. Uh, he's like does quick financial, like seven, eight minute episodes uh, of topics. And the two of the engineers were uh, kind of arguing or discussing the graphic when the graphic comes up, you know, on the bottom of the screen. And what should that sound effect be? Should it be, uh, should it go right. left to right? Should it get, you know, should it pan or whatever? And I, I didn't step in. I kind of wanted to see what happened. And, and then um, after a couple of weeks, they both kind of did their own thing. I, I let it kind of slide for a little bit. Like, we're not going to standardize this. You guys, it, it's a sound effect. Come on. So, um, so after kind of a couple of weeks, they kind of went one way together. And uh, no one mm. really won the argument. But we're like, oh, this works. Uh, so that was just a small argue, uh, a argument. Little, that. A little bit also, of creative, creative inception on your yeah, part. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then, of course, we're always uh, uh, arguing about compression. You know, like, where, should the compression be after clarity or before right. clarity? Should we use more limiting? Should we do the the plosive here? Or like, you know, that those kind of signal flow, signal flow things that yep. nobody else in the world cares about, uh, <laughs> about us, but we'll die on that hill. Right. Sure. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Scott, anything going on? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I stopped being in a band a long time ago mm. because of that. Right. It's like fighting over like nothing. I'm like, dude, we'll just, we'll make something else. If it's not that big, you know, this isn't that big of a deal. And, you know, my, uh, at least for me, my own creative approaches to things, if somebody else has an idea that they're willing to die on the cross for, like, go, let's do your idea. You yeah. know, for, for me, it's about like, how do we keep the ball moving forward and not get too lost in, in the minutia of, it's not to say that it's not important, but ultimately, like, as engineers and creatives, we get lost in our own stuff. And, mm -hmm. and nobody else kind of will unless they have a reference point to something. So, you know, you toss in a Willem scream, then it becomes like a cool thing. Right. But if you're if you're worrying about a cool like, thing, well, I, I think it is. Though. <laughs> it is. It is. Them, you can, if you can cool. sneak it in, it's a, it's it's cool, yeah. the longest running audio joke. Maybe that's it. Ever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, th I think that's it. You know, and like if so, if I have people that 
I, I haven't really had too much people like fighting over things outside of the department. Like maybe I'm working with, uh, you know, a brand person or marketing person, you know, they might have a lot more opinions. And then I go, you know, look, this is your project. I'm just trying to make it as best as I can. If you think that this is the move, we'll do the move. And then we'll see where it lies, you know, in, in the market and in the audience. Yeah. Yeah. I like what Scott said there. Uh, I, I, as a leader, I kind of let a lot of things where I, my personal opinion, like I want it done this way, or if I was doing this, if I was mixing this, I would do it this way, but imposing my uh, preferences on the team doesn't get us anywhere. Um, if they want to do it this way and it sounds great and, and it moves the ball down the road, I'm fine with that on the weekend when I'm mixing the record for my client, I'll do it my way. But during the week, um, let's get the team. Let's just keep the team in good spirits and, and move the ball down the field and be positive about it. I think that works. Yeah. 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 I think you, you both kind of touched on this. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hop on a question that came from, uh, from Jamie, who's actually, uh, she works with us at pro sound effects, but a great question and relevant to this probably I'm assuming something that, uh, Oh, nice. We can highlight it. Wow. There you are. Uh, perhaps something you've already tackled at this point in your, at this point in your career, but I think any manager that's in kind of like a player coach situation where, you still do the thing. So for me, I lead the sales team, but I still do some sales on, you know, for in certain um, capacities. So how do you, how do you fight the urge? Uh, you know, rather than delegating sometimes, how do you fight the urge not to just jump in and do it yourself? Um, it sounds like, it sounds like you both are in pretty healthy places, but you know, to anybody who's like a new up and like aspiring or up and coming manager, you know, what, what's that mindset? What's the mindset you have to have to, to conquer that? Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, two things. I, I have to slow down. Like I, mm -hmm. it's better to teach them to do it. And, and kind of like Scott says, don't answer their question. You got it. You got to let them do it or teach them to do it because then if you don't, then you're going to be doing it in the next week and the week after and whatever. And I don't have time. I might be able to do, I might be able to step in one day and finish an episode, do a dialogue cleanup, or whatever. But that's not something I can consistently do. Like I am, my schedule is full. So you have to teach them to take that on. And, and it, it's some, it's, you have to slow down and go, all right, here's how let's, let's work on this. This, you can do this. I can't take it over. So yeah. um, it's hard to do. Like you have to bite your tongue and go, cause uh, there's, there is, this does happen sometimes. There's a guy on my team and um, he'll, uh, I'm trying to see how I can say this without. Let's throw him right under the bus. Let's do this. <laughs> Anyways. He doesn't have I, YouTube. I He's never going to see this. The, I want to grab the keyboard and start. <laughs> like, I can do it in 10 seconds. You know? and I have to slow yeah. down. Like I, okay, you yeah. do this. All right. Take this shortcut, whatever. Okay. And let him do it. It's, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to do, but you got to <laughs> let him do it. Because you can't do it. Like I can't fit that into my schedule to do that all the time. So yeah. Yeah. S Scott, maybe a little, maybe a little mindfulness helps. Yeah. Um, that definitely <laughs> does help. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Um, I, I think, you know, it's a couple things. One it's what is your peer? What are our, what are the peers of this person think? Let's go talk to them. Let's see what they might have done in that. And then also referencing. So it's like, Hey, I know you did this thing. But like, did you hear this thing? This is sort of like what we could be going for too. So having like a reference point, <clears throat> otherwise you're sort of, um, you know, play, trying to play darts with blindfold on. And, and I think like sometimes you have to al allow people to be guided a little bit without being like, do this exactly, you know? Right, so right. I, I think having like with when you're doing a mix, for instance, on an album, Paul knows this, you go, what are you going for? You're going for this kind of music you're going for this kind of style you're going for like a warmer thing or you know whatever so give me some references for the record that you want this record to sound like and then i know where to kind of place my target and i think doing that for your team is essential yeah. as well nice yeah. um cool we got yeah we got time for a couple more thoughts here um yeah both of you guys are 
audio people and have audio backgrounds and director of audio, you know, audio title, but there is um, video teams involved too. Not every company has the luxury of having like a dedicated audio team. Sometimes we have, you know, content created, not too dissimilar from the, the audio visual content, at least that you guys are putting out um, that don't have any audio people. So, you know, with that, I think comes with maybe a little bit of skepticism at uh, with the higher ups or, you know, with executives about the importance of sound. It's like, well, our video editors are taking care of everything. What would you say, you know, if you want to get on a soapbox or give a PSA, like, what would you say to, you know, somebody at a company like that, who is, who's putting up roadblocks and saying, you know what sound is, is whatever, you know, just get it out there. All, all people care about is what people are saying or what it looks like. Um, you know, so what would you say about the importance of sound to a piece and how it connects with the audience? Hmm. Uh, go ahead. I, mean, I mean, it's really t tough sometimes, right? Like, um, I mean, we deal with this all the time and, and it's like, it's easier to deal with somebody that's made a mistake in the past. Like for instance, if you have, you know, a podcast that comes in, I I'm working on a podcast outside of work right now. And it's like, it was recorded on an iPhone and it was recording in a studio. And, and then they came to me to fix it because the other person who recorded it, you know, wild west of podcast world, um, edited it. And they're like, it just doesn't sound presentable enough to go out. Right, and right. so like, it's easy once it's like in that mode, but to, to convince somebody it's like, look, you can always fix picture, but if the sound is bad, you can't always fix it. So it's better invest in that aspect of it and standardize things so that you know that, for instance, the reason the we have the FCC, right, is when you turn your TV on, the commercials aren't 16 dB louder than the television show, which, by the way, I have such a massive pet peeve with all the streaming <laughs> services yeah. right now. Like, you know, Netflix is like crazy loud compared to Amazon. It, again, yeah. so, yeah. but that's another, show, that's another episode of the, the series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, explaining, yeah. using that, everybody yeah. knows that right now. Right. So yeah. explaining that to somebody to be like, Hey, you know, when you turn on Netflix, why it's so much louder than the other, because nobody's paying attention to that. And that's what I do. I pay attention to those things. So yeah. you don't have to, and you know, like if it, if it's, um, Audio will take you away from something as much as it will put you in. So you got to make sure that you're doing yeah. it right from the get go. Video, yeah. it's like, it's, I can look at something, I can look at a film and go, okay, I know what this is going to be. For the most part, it looks like this. The coloring is like this. I, we're on this planet or something. Yeah. I know what it is. Audio, you have to, it's a linear, non tangible experience that has to do with time. Mm. People go, what? And they go, yeah. So that's why you need to hire me. <laughs> you know, so. I just confused you enough. Yeah. Hire me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paul, anything to add there? Oh, no, well, the, the, the easiest way to get that across the point is play a video and then turn the sound off and go, yeah. Mm, is the sound important? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm in, I'm fortunate though, that here at Ramsey, like everybody is into the audio. Like I don't have yeah. to convince anybody yeah, about great. let's, let's make it the best sound. And I, and I think it's partly, why there is an audio team, why there is a director of audio. Um, yeah. Same at uh, Headspace. And like, they, they take that seriously. Um, yeah. So yeah, just turn yeah. the sound off and we'll try to watch yeah. a movie and you're, you're going to be out of luck. I have a similar to just turn the sound off on the flip side. I, one of the like images I like to conjure in this space is like, or actually I read it. I read some study. I don't know if it can be believed, but it said that up to 95% of people have a, f a phone in their hands when they're watching, you know, watching their shows at night or whatever mm. it is. And it just made me think it's like, if you're not even looking at the, you know, like the argument that the visual is, I mean, and I'm saying the argument, the budget, all the, most of the budget goes to visual components, right? Exactly. Yeah. Paul, sorry, we lost you. I'll wait. Uh, <laughs> You know, so much of the budget goes to yeah. visual components. Audio comes last, but at the end of the day, it's it's honestly it's kind of like mastering. You spend all this time mastering something to make it perfect, and then and make right. it so so loud, and then people can just beep, I'm going to turn the volume down, so they can kind of undo all this work. But people, 
will sit there and they'll follow the narrative and they'll follow the story by just listening to it. And they're like mm. looking at Instagram or whatever at the same time. I, I'm not saying that anybody in my household does that. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that that's an example. Whereas if you just turn, if you take, like you said, if you turn the sound off and people are just watching, and if you don't have subtitles, which maybe you do, you just, you're not, you're not as gripped by the story, but I think oh, you yeah, can. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. Thanks guys. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. Little change of, uh, change of gears here. Wild card question. What do you guys think about AI, generative AI, AI tools in general? Um, and yeah, what are you guys working, working with in your workflows? Do you, are you using it, um, in any sort of way talk talk to me about that Scott. um yeah so you know we're i'm dabbling um yeah. I, I i embrace um i embrace technology because i think with without it you're going to get left in the dust and you know when when uh music recording went from real to real to pro tools i remember that i mean i was was a kid but you know i my first recordings were on reels and you know adats and stuff so yeah. um and i know a lot of people probably were freaking out back then it's like well what's you know and guy of course the guy on the reel like yeah he, you know he probably had to jump on the desk going forward but there's a way to manipulate things and understand things going forward that's always going to need a human touch i think and with ai specifically like we have to drive the engine of AI rather than the AI drive the engine of us. So I, I think that there's a lot of um, potential there for things to be really uh, kind of amazing um, yeah. if, if utilized correctly. You're still going to have to have a person to make it presentable, I think, mm -hmm. you know, because it could be anything. And in, in randomness, yeah. you know, then it gets a little too random. Yeah. So you what, are you guys, are you guys using any, any AI tools in your workflow now? I use um, like let, recently I've been using Descript. Um, nice. Just as like a, which is like, I don't know if you guys know what it is, but it takes yeah. audio and it transcribes it and then you can edit the script. Uh, yeah. It's really good for people who aren't versed in, in, um, in, you know, audio editing for dialogue, but you can act quite literally just change the, um, the script and it'll adjust the 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 um audio but what's really cool about it is they have an ai tool that you can sort of utilize for um certain words like hey this person flubbed it just ai the little flub and then mm, nice. you can fix that so it's really yeah, helpful cool. yeah. for for audio engineering uh yeah that's that. a and that's a big t time saver rather than you know getting the talent back or you know just yeah. to, just to adr like two words right Totally. <clears throat> yeah, Paul, what, what about you? Well, we're using uh, Autopod to, to write to, to run some screeners on uh, some of our video podcasts. They'll do, a, they'll do a screener and pop it out. So an edit, editor has a, a can start halfway down the field instead of starting right at you know, the, the one yard line. Um, we're also developing um, uh, AI voice models of some of our personalities um, for spots or for, like Scott said, for fixes, uh, we'll get, you know, they'll do spots a couple times a week and we may get 20 or 30 spots at a time. And then they're, uh, they're not, they're supposed to be 30 seconds. It might be 33 seconds or 28 seconds. And we're editing, trying to get them to the right place, or they'll say the wrong CTA or something. So we're developing these models so that when we're editing, we can fix like easily fix things. Also working, experiment, experimenting with that uh, and fixing audiobooks. Like um, they won't allow publishers won't let you al allow you to use an AI voice, but you can do fixes with AI. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. like if they said the wrong uh, mispronounce somebody's name or whatever. So we're, yeah. we're slowly incorporating some of those tools uh, a lot of people make fun of oh yeah ai and they'll show you some crazy picture and this is never <laughs> going to work but i'll tell you what in the last year it's it's grown by leaps and bounds and in two years from now who knows what it'll yeah. be able to do i mean um it could it it you know there's it's a two-edged sword it can increase efficiency and creative 
with creativity. And then it could also eliminate jobs if we're able to do things faster and and cleaner and uh, who knows where it's going. But you at least have to dip your toe in and see what's going on. Otherwise, you will get left behind and at some point. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> nice. Um, cool. All right. Well, we're just about wrapping up. If you guys want to give me um, a haiku of sorts, what what advice would you give to new managers who are coming on to lead a, a creative team? So someone stepping into their first managerial ro role of creatives, just um, it doesn't have to actually be a haiku, but something more or less haiku length. <laughs> Uh, I, I would say observe, observe what's already going on. Um, like the, the last thing a team wants is some guy coming in and bossing them around in the second week and how to do things. Um, you have to kind of build some trust and, uh, see how they're doing things and take, take things one at a, one at a time. It you can't yeah. just, just jump in and tear the place up. <clears throat> I don't know if that's a haiku. haiku that, was, that was that was it. Great it was one. a few haikus, but it was great. It was great. Uh, I think mine is you know observe, listen, um, accept change, and and know that you're not always right, especially in a creative field. Allow for the magic that people have within themselves to kind of come out, and then also take some breaths. You know, there you go. Chill out. <laughs> yes, we should all. I'm a big proponent of breath work meditation all that stuff that's again that's another that's another episode um but yeah this has been great i really appreciate you guys uh quick plug on, on our end um we just released um our ultimate sound workflow guide for teams this is like a, it's basically an ebook it's like a 40 page document um and uh we interviewed a lot of people including scott who's quoted in there a couple times just about all all the different um, you know aspects of managing a creative team. Lots about communication, tools, uh, logistics, security, etc. Um, we'd love to have you guys check it out. It's free. We just dropped the link in the chat. We'll also put that in the description as well. Um, last thing, do you guys want to plug anything cool that you're working on before we sign off? Well, to plug your workflow manual, we're actually meeting the uh, audio engineers and video editors are meeting on Monday to go over, uh, we're implementing uh, SoundCue across all the seats so that we can share uh, collections uh, for shows and uh, documentaries and product videos. So we're, we're coming Fantastic. together on that and getting that yeah, thing rolling. Amazing. Love that, love it. I'll, uh, I'll plug Headspace. Um, it's a meditation mindfulness app, sleep content, music. There's also some free stuff out there if you don't wanna Download the app. You want to try some things? You can go onto our YouTube page, or we have music on Spotify. Uh, so yeah, check that stuff out. Awesome. Well, thanks guys so much. Uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll sign off, and yeah, really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks. It was, it was yeah. Great. Good yeah. to see yeah. you. Thanks. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah, take Bye. care. Bye.